Live. Oh, we're live? Yep. We're live. We're live. Oh, he pushed live. Shoot. Didn't tell me. Keeping it a secret out there, Mackie? Sorry. Right. Hey, Keep good to be toes. with you all. Thank you so much for being here. Tackle Shop Confessions live from Island Fishing Tackle in Carson, California. Call me amigo, Sam De La Torre. Yeah, Sam, man. how are you, man? You're looking good after this trip. Am I? I thought you were going to be beat. I, do I, I, I feel beat. Really? I don't look beat. You don't look beat. Whoa. All right. Looking well, good. good. I'm put a lock on the door you know, there. five days out at sea, um, even though we didn't catch much, like anything, which I will go over our five-day trip with you all. We had an exceptional time. I'll tell you all about the crew and everybody else. It was a lot of fun. No doubt about it. But, man, it was tough to get a bite, Sam. We just could not find any fish. And we literally covered 600 miles of water on this trip. So I'll huh? definitely be getting into that. Well, it looks like we are. Yeah, it's showing on the thing there. Are we live? Somebody Are we live, on. everybody? Oh, yes, we we're yeah, live. Yeah. We're live. We are live. I'm barely alive. Yeah. Yeah. All right, back uh, back we are again. So I'll get into that whole trip, answer your questions. Sam, of course, will answer all your questions. Hit that like button if you don't mind. We deeply appreciate it when you do that. Come on by Island Fishing Tackle and say hi to Sam and... Sam, uh, so you're blank right there that you yeah. donated. Um, you're never going to believe who was awarded that. I awarded it that, that. I awarded it to, you know, Kim Herbert, who yeah. came from Missouri? Yeah, yeah, yeah. His daughter caught her very first legal halibut. Oh. And she was beyond excited. And what a lovely father and daughter couple. You told me, really nice yeah, guy he... when I missed him. And you were absolutely right. Super good guy. His daughter was great. So she got that. They're going to contact you in the next 48 hours, talk about wrapping it, and then uh, come back in June or July, I forget which, okay. and pick it up. Cool. So, yeah, it was just great. Are you okay back there? Yeah. Have you had a COVID test today? Yeah. Oh, what did it say? You didn't pass it, did you? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, great. You know, it's fantastic. So, we actually, I awarded it to her, shot some video of that, so it was Very great. Good. Shot awesome. some video of Scott Buchan on the trip. Some we can share, some we can't. <laughs> and uh, I can't say enough about the crew. You, you know as well as I, when you're out not catching fish, they're working harder up Man. there yeah. than, than uh, any other time. Sam, so I'll just, I got to tell you this. It's like day three, you know, and you're, we were sitting outside the whole time, the kids and I, my, my son Philip and then his friend Josh. So we're just back in the store, you know what I mean? Be outside, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we're sitting there, but you're kind of like brain dead at that point. Like, man, are we ever going to get a stop? Are we going to yeah. see something? And all of a sudden, Philip goes, what is that? And he's like, and there's an F-18 oh, yeah. barreling down on us. Goes like 100 feet over us. Just wow, <laughs> the bitch in his sound. Everybody comes running out, and Philip's like standing going, woo! <laughs> and then I go, hey, and here comes another one. Buzzes us again, and then they were really high, like shooting overs. What a freaking thrill! That's pretty cool, man. Whoa, that was. I love air shows, and used to take the kids when they were really young uh, down to um, uh, right to beach down there. No, I took him to the one down Miramar, in San Diego. Uh, I forget Miramar what it's called. Yeah, Miramar. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so we go to that all the time. What a thrill, man! I mean, that was personal air show. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was so cool. And plus, so I go to the wheelhouse, and I go. That must have scared the hell out of you guys. And Brian goes, oh, my God, I jumped out. I'm like, what is that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was so cool. So, all right, I got a lot of fishing to get into with you all. It's been, I mean, it was not only breezy for us. That's the boat to be on in the breeze, by yeah, the way. Yeah, you're on the right boat. Independence. Sure. But I guess everywhere, right? It's been kind of slow yeah. around. Yeah. Windy. Yeah. Windy every night. Yeah, yeah. Even even here at night and I can only imagine what you guys were getting there. I mean, oh, God. Was, I'm sure he was just trying to tack and figure out where to hide. And, you know, at times I'm sure it was okay. But, but most of the time it seems like you guys had it, had it, had it going uh, head on the whole time. So yeah, like, we yeah. definitely did. And we covered, yeah. like, a lot of water. You know, we were down the Baja coast. Probably ended up about 260 mm -hmm. fish in the coast down there. And um, had a little halibut bite on a beach on the coast there. That was really good, and uh, I think if we would have hit it earlier, we probably would have done well, but we're trying to find yeah. yellows down that way. And you would think at some point you'd find a, a jag yeah. of yellowtail, and we never did. We never found bluefin. Um, so, hey, you know, it's fishing. It's a big ocean. You know, sometimes you zig when they zag, and you know, they could be there tomorrow or be there the day before. I mean, fishing is just one of those things that, you know, those guys do such a good job. It's sometimes it's hard to believe that they would ever miss. 
But yeah, I mean, I know. Even, even them, I mean, I'm sure sometimes, I'm sure they're pulling their hair out. They're rolling yeah. up out west as we speak. They're mm -hmm. out on the mushroom. So I'll be watching them all night tonight. Anything happens, I'll let everybody know. You know, on every trip, just about, you have one jerk. You know, somebody uh, like Dan Lighthouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or Lightfoot, I'm sorry. Yeah. And, you know, oh, this sucks, you know, this fishing, blah, blah, blah. I can't believe, didn't have one. Not one. Not one person. No. Everybody's like, man, these guys work hard. Man, we're so appreciative. God, the food is incredible and then guys are we're getting in and you know caught nothing and they're trying to get on the eight day trip the one that's going out yeah that we're sponsoring <laughs> in november oh, oh okay, yeah okay. trying to get on that waiting list so it was great and of course i want to thank uh trocar great hooks uh so happy to have them on board with us uh i want to thank uh promar ahi for providing great hats for everybody uh taddy lures man i was using the slow pitch up in the bow mm -hmm. Catching rockfish because I don't have to film people reeling in rockfish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was all over it. I'm going, come on, let's go. Philip and I went up to the Bower catching four or five pound reds. All right. Some big bucket mouths, you know, some nice uh -huh. bocaccio. Uh -huh. uh, and I love that, man. So we had a really good time doing that. And uh, just an all around great trip. We just were missing fish. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's it. Good time fishing, not, not a whole lot of catching. Have you been on trips like that? Never. Really? <laughs> Yeah, right, I know. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I don't think I've been on a long trip like that. Yeah, that's... To be honest with yeah. you. Um, I've been pretty dang lucky. You know, one of the things I always tell people is, you know, I'm so blessed to have gone on all these trips. And, and, and maybe sometimes you just forget about those slow trips. You know, I'm sure at some point I've been on trips that were just slower than others. But, um, but you just kind of, those kind of just fade away, I think. I don't, right. I don't know, you know, so none, none, that, none that come to mind right away for sure. So, and another great surprise for me on this trip was, um, you know, Sean Hardigan runs the Mission Bell, and yeah. he's Scott Buchert's roommate. Yeah. And Mimi, they just had a baby together, and so I saw Mimi with the baby, and Scott was running around being a good uncle with the baby <coughs> down there, and all of a sudden, here comes Sean, he walks up, and he goes, guess what, dude? And I go, what? And he goes, <coughs> I'm now on the Independence. And I go, what? And he goes, yeah, I'm on your trip, man. Wow. And I go, oh, that's great. So he was so, with you the whole time. Yeah, we had Sean, and then, you know, we could get Scott in the crossfire because <coughs> I bet, he's yeah. got all kinds of dirt <laughs> like I do on Scott. So oh, it was Scott had it coming, yeah. Yeah, he sure <laughs> did. Let me tell you. So great stuff. You want me to read a couple comments? Yeah, let's or, up you, here a little bit, yeah. Yeah. All right. Jason Allen, who is up there in Alaska. Jason, always great to have you with us. Can't wait to hear about your independence adventure. I've got more where that came from, Jason. Hopefully you guys had a chance to stop off and fish. One of the Baja honey holes, so many pinnacles, high spots, and deep areas holding big bottom feeders. We did. I mean, I was amazed that, like, off Ensenada, we were a little bit below. They're probably fishing Soledad Reef or, you know, like Santo Tomas. Uh, from the looks of it, man, there's some really nice fish there. Yeah. And full speed. For sure, yeah. Yeah, full speed. Lings, like I said, big Boccaccio, nice reds, four or five pounders, some, some bigger than that. Quite a few links. So, yeah, Jason, it was great. Uh, Jason, hey, uh, Phil and Sam, I have a question about line. If I have 50 to 65-pound braid on my jig reel, what pound fluorocarbon, should I use heavier or lighter, or I guess the same would be uh, a another, part of that question. option, yeah. I mean, uh, it really depends on what kind of jig fishing you're talking about. If it's, if it's a yo-yo type uh, situation, you're probably going to fish maybe 50-pound. It's going to be more... Uh, based on maybe the, the, what you're trying to accomplish. So with that yo-yo fishing, you can fish 50 pound um, because you're, you're, a lot of times you're also dealing with a lot of structure as well. So you want a little heavier line, 40 or 50 pound. Surface iron fishing, uh, most of the guys are gonna fish 50 pound if you're using a short leader. It sounds like you're using all braid with a short leader, like maybe a Alexa or, or something like that. In that case, I'd probably fish 40 or 50. Sometimes, um, um, like the way I fish my surface iron stuff is I'm, using a long top shot, so 40 pound mono top shot on 50 or 65, um, either or, but fishing 40 pound. And the reason being is that that lighter line allows the jig to swim a little bit better. But if you're using that braid, that's already gonna be lighter or skinnier. And so you could probably go with a little bit heavier uh, leader. Probably wouldn't go too long though, if you're doing that kind of situation, maybe a two or three foot leader for, for something like that. But I'm, I'm using more of a longer top shot, maybe 100 yards or so. 50 or 40, 40 uh, pounds. All right, very good. And we want to thank Daiwa for providing us with some great reels <clears throat> as well as some great jigs that 
Unfortunately, we didn't get to fish with, but we got more trips coming up. Yeah. Uh, reverse two and a half day trip on the Amigo. That's so. coming up too, right? Yeah, June. Nice. So I'm sure that that two and a half day trip will be right in the wind tunnel again because I'm really <laughs> good at picking those times. Yeah. I've, I've developed a certain expertise in yeah. picking the windy days. You use up all your picking uh, uh, skills with, with Scott and his, and his bets, I think. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I know. Really, I wiped him out. Yeah. I'll never get paid on that. Christopher Navarro. Hey, Chris, great to see you, my friend. Welcome back, Phil. Hey, Sam, I am Jason Allen. Hey, Phil and Sam, what is your opinion on the Albright Not For a Time braid to fluorocarbon? It's one that, that I've used quite a bit. You know, um, there's, two, there's so many knots out there. I mean, there, there's... You know, there's that Albright knot, there's FG knot, there's Worm knot, there's Bob Sands knot, RP knot, Tony Pena knot, and they're all kind of, you know, similar knots in a way that one wraps around the other. They're all really, really good, you know. I, I would say that whichever one you feel most comfortable tying is the one that you should tie. All those knots should be more than sufficient. Um, you know, real, real common knot, a question I get is, you know, well, what's the best knot? I always tell them it's the one you know how to tie. Yeah. You know, because that's going to be the one that's going to probably be the strongest for you because you've got the technique on that knot right. down. But but that knot's good. That, that knot's caught millions of fish, I'm sure, and should work great as long as you're tying it right. All right. And, and having confidence in whatever you're doing. Exactly. It's a big part yeah, of it, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. Very good. Uh, Peter Cepeda says, hi, Phil Peter. Thank you so much for... Being here, Michael Limon. That's Michael Limon. He says, hey, Phil. Hey. You're leaving Sam out, huh? <laughs> Are you mad at Sam? No. Oh, okay. Hey, Michael, what's up? <laughs> Good to have him back here with us. Again, last week he was hitting 500 in a game. That's right. Making us proud. That's it, Doing man. well. All right, uh, Peter Cepeda, what are your thoughts on the SSR Seeker 40 to 60 for Wahoo and Yo-Yo fishing 50 to 60 pound and maybe sinker rig? Yeah, that SSR series, they have a few different models. They have a SSR 7640, 7650, 7660. So it depends on which one you're talking about. But that 7650, I think, would be a nice all-around Wahoo rod, yo-yo rod. Um, and you could maybe even fish 60-pound on that sinker rig, too. So I think it's a great rod, yeah. It's, it's, it's somewhat affordable. Uh, one of the more kind of straight-line rods, not a whole lot of fancy stuff on it. And they built it that way to be able to be uh, build it a little bit more affordably. So that's a great rod, Peter. Another thing, we got to see the eclipse. Oh, that's right. You yeah. were out there, yeah. And yeah. Kim uh -huh. and Leslie, his daughter, they brought glasses for everybody. Really? Yes. That's cool. The Freeman Adventures guy forgot all about it. Didn't have anything. <laughs> I was just saying, like, look through your fingers, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. But everybody was ready to burn their eyes out. But <laughs> luckily they had it, and it was great, man. It was cool. You know, something to do, right? Something different. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that was another great thing. I'm working in all these things that have nothing to do with catching yeah, fish. Yeah. But that was great. All right, uh, Peter, thanks. Uh, great question. Uh, Michael Limon says, how was the weather? Michael, it was nasty. Jeez. It was blowing, I want to say. 100? <laughs> 18 to 25, pretty constantly. Pretty Jeez. constantly. And so we were getting knocked around. But that is one stable. Oh, boat. yeah. That is one yeah. stable rig. The independence, wow. In that weather, it really wasn't an issue. It wasn't that bad. Hmm. You know, you, it wasn't like you'd go in the galley in the morning and everything was trashed. They yeah. had everything secure. You know, they're good at that. But it wasn't that bad. It hmm. was uh, it was okay. So, But trying to catch fish, and it's a different, yeah, whole different yeah, thing. Yeah. Yep. All right. Uh, let's see. We've got uh, Jeff Yeomans, 540 Slinger. Jeff, great to see you. Thank you for your service. Good evening, Phil and Sam. Albert Roy says, I'm alive. Albert. I'm thankful you're alive. Robert Graber, good evening, Phil and Sam, and the Friedman Adventures family. Happy Tuesday. Welcome back, Phil. Robert, it was great to see you up there at Ventura Sport Fishing. Uh, they are full rack going tomorrow. They're trying to get enough people for their trip on the island spirit tomorrow. Uh, hopefully they'll get out, but they've got some great trips coming up. Uh, David Betroy, did I get do that right? Betois. Betois, pardon me. What is up with the bluefin? I noticed today at 3 p.m. the tanner booty was reading six knots. Hope the fish did not bug out of here. Uh, David, that's, a, that's the question right now. Where are the bluefin tuna? So the boys that are out, Independence, uh, Brian said, I'm not going south. I'm not doing that again. <laughs> We've already covered <laughs> that. Already looked there. <laughs> yeah, we're going west. And he's got the weather window. Should be on the mushroom, probably rolling up on it right now. So... He should be on it at sundown, 
And of course, I'll be talking to Brian and some other guys on the boat and keeping you all in touch with all the very latest. I did, it did cross my mind though, like, what if those things just Are gone, huh? Yeah, I mean, it's scary. Yeah. Right? Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, scary. I don't know if this is the right term, but concerning, maybe, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, you start to think, well, I mean, maybe that was it, you know? <laughs> yeah. But there's been so little boat uh, coverage, coverage yeah. that, that I think it's just, they've lost it, and they'll get back on it here pretty soon. Hopefully, that's going to happen. Um, Michael Limon watched the eclipse at school. How mm. was it? Yeah, that's cool, right? Yeah, yeah. I think all the schools had that, huh? I think so, probably. Charles Link, just call it an Albacore exploratory oh, yeah. trip. I mean, the water we were in, that's funny, Charles. You're absolutely right, and I made that comment on the trip. We were in like 57 to 61 and a half degree water pretty much the whole, the time. whole time. And, you know, Ensenada has a really good ponga bite going on in yellows right now. Really, really good. Mm. Uh, Big Bonita, uh, I talked to a guy named Folka. He's a pongero down there, and he said, we have sand bass and calico bass and barracuda. And if you look at a picture of the water temps, it's blue everywhere, but inside the bay, 62-degree oh. water. So everything, Just trapped in you know, there, I'm yeah. getting in there in that warm water, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. Huh. So they're all in there whaling. You know, Campo Siete, the guys, the Mexicans that climb down the rocks, basically risk their lives to fish. They're all getting them from the rocks, and they're nice, man. They were like 15 to 25-pound fish. So oh, wow. There's some really, really nice fish. You know, the Amigo had six yellowtail really? over the weekend. Yeah, so uh, out at the island, mm -hmm. one of the islands. I don't want to say because I don't want somebody <laughs> chasing me around with a fillet knife. But he had six yellows, and I think uh, the Fury had some fish also. Yeah. So a little bit starting to creep in the counts here too, Sam. It's happening. It's starting yeah. to happen. Yeah, turn to turn. I mean, yeah, you know, this, this weather always kind of feels like, like, like you know, <coughs> it's going to take a break, but <coughs> it has been kind That's of true. slow. Excuse me. Yeah, it definitely has it been. Took a water. It definitely has. But oh, um, I like it when you take your mic with you, and we can hear you cough the whole way. All right, hey, this is a perfect opportunity to remind you that I will be back with the morning briefing. Don't miss the morning briefing. We will have all the very latest for you. Make sure you become a follower on the Freeman Adventures Facebook page. It is there that we put up our charters and so much more. You can join oh. Mackie and I. Mackie's going to be on a lot of these trips. He's just kind of hidden out there tonight. We can make, you know, he can do a cameo appearance. What's your next trip? Later on. Next trip is May the 9th. Okay. On board the um, uh, El Patron. Okay. May the 23rd on the El Patron. May the 31st on the Island Spirit. That May, that May, that first one, that's that all day trip? Yeah, 5 a.m. to nice, 5 p.m. Nice. Yeah. And then second one, same thing. And then we'll be up there on the Island Spirit, which I'm really looking forward to. Maybe Go Mike, Michael Limon will be with us. Maybe. Yeah, who knows? All right, Charles, <laughs> I love it, man. Albacore Exploratory. We ran the first Albacore Exploratory trip of the year. <laughs> We're out there looking for him. Hit that like button, everybody. David is back and says, good evening, Phil and Sam. David, good to see you live free and die free. Evening, Phil and Sam. Great to have you here. William, this is putting your time in. Time to yeah. share why fishing never gives you any for sure. That's what keeps me coming back fish harder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's right. Yeah. If you went out and killed him every single time, you know, It'd be great. Yeah, no. I, was saying, I, don't know, I don't know what you're going to say that's so negative about yeah, that. Yeah, right. It'd be fantastic. What yeah. am I talking about? I really want a trip to suck every once yeah. in a while just to ground me. You know, another thing, I'm digging out all these great things. So it was my son Philip's birthday, mm -hmm. which is today, but we celebrated last night. Brian came down, did a whole thing, sang happy birthday. Really, really class act. Uh, the galley guy, you know, he had a little cake and brought that out. But... So, honest to God, Philip's sitting there, like, and he goes, I swear to God, I think this is the best birthday I've ever had. And that's after not catching yeah. much fish. And I think the fish he was the most excited about was the last fish caught on the boat. We were, like, fishing Punta Banda, the rocks, and he kept chucking, like, a plastic up into the white water. And I go, you can't get a bite on that, huh? And he goes, no, man, I, you know. And then I came in the galley. And then I hear him yelling, and he's got a nice calico that he bounced over with a huge smile. Yeah. Just one calico bass, and it just made his, like, he <laughs> All was the so, efforts, you know, finally got something I out of it. I think so, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, so 
That was really good. Leonard Rivera says, good evening, gentlemen. Leonard, thank you for being here with us. We appreciate it. Looking for an acid wrap Phoenix Megalodon type rod for Bluefin Tuna. Any recommendations? So those are going to probably come more of, of a uh, custom rod. Um, I don't think anybody makes one factory um, that you, know, you buy off the shelf. Um, not that I could think of off the top of my head, at least. But, uh, but you know, we, we stock some here. I, I know I have a couple there that Moon uh, wrapped, and he's uh, left for here uh, for us to sell. We've got a couple as well. My, one of them actually might even be a Megalodon rod, so or, you know, built on a blank, Megalodon blank. So that's going to be a way to get it, um, you know, versus getting a, a, a factory wrapped off the shelf rod. We're going to have to get something custom made or something that's been already pre-made uh, in a custom, custom shop. So... Um, come down and check them out. We have them here uh, available, but the, or, or you're going to have to find someone to wrap one for you. All right, very good. As we surge past 100 viewers, morning briefing tomorrow morning at uh, daybreak is when I record it. Who knows when mm -hmm. it'll uh, load up, but we'll have that for you. We may even have uh, Dan Lightfoot down there one of these mornings here in the very near future, surf fishing with Michael Limon. However, it will have to be on a weekend because you're back in school, right? And what do I tell you all the time about fishing in school? Just blow school off and go fit. No, I never tell him that. <laughs> I tell him definitely. School is very, very important. In fact, Grandpa did the carrot and the stick thing with Michael, and his grades went right through the roof. Nice. If you get good grades, you go fishing more often. So great job. All right, uh, Chris Navarro, yeah, Phil. Been fishing in a while though. So what's been going? No, on? really. <laughs> yeah, how's your grades? Are they good? <laughs> you still killing it? Uh -huh. Good job. All right, Chris Navarro says, Phil, I'm having problems trying to buy a hat and XL shirt at checkout. I'm going to Matt's meeting tomorrow where you're the guest speaker. Oh, thank you. I forgot about that, actually. Thank you for reminding <laughs> me. Can I buy it from you there? Um, I'll see what I can do. You can get a hat for sure. I've got that. Uh, the shirts I'll uh, find out about. And I will check with Chuck. Last time we had somebody say they were having trouble and I said I was going to shoot Chuck or something and he was watching so he called me right after. I figured he's not watching. I can say whatever. Uh, and I'll talk to Chuck and he'll take uh, immediate care of that. But I will definitely have hats tomorrow, Chris. Thank you for asking and I'll try and see if I can't get you an XL shirt. You know, Mackie, I think I gave Mackie an XL so I'll just see if I can get it back from yeah, him. Yeah. Give me go. that back. I've only worn it once. Have you worn that thing? <laughs> All right, uh, are you, did you see a question on well, there? Well, uh, I just kind of wanted to uh, no, go sure. back to that uh, acid wrap in case some guys Please. don't know what it means. Yeah. So um, this is a standard guide set up here where all the guides are on top. I'm not sure if you guys can kind of see that there. And then this is one of the uh, acid wrap rods here where the guides are sp or spiral wrapped. You'll see that they kind of go around the blank. This is the top here, so they're going down. And then this is one here from Moon, Moon Custom Rods. Moon. There, and you'll see it's the same way there. It's, it's, this is the top, of, or facing up, and you see that the guides, they go down and spiral around. So if you guys are wondering what that spiral wrap means, that's what it means. And we got them here available. All right, where am I speaking tomorrow? What, where, Hoffset and Hoffset Torrance. And Torrance yeah. Hoffset and Torrance. Hoffset and Torrance. Yeah, yeah, come on down, everybody. Can they come down? Anybody? Of course, anybody sure. can. Come yeah, down yeah. tomorrow, doggone it. Yeah, besides... I'll know, have a this, cup of coffee with you. Besides uh, the great presentation I'm sure you're going to make, they, they do like a raffle. They have a great raffle. Yeah, it's a pretty good raffle. I know it's five, six, seven hundred bucks worth of stuff. And you you know buy a ticket and you you're you in. have a chance to, to win something. Usually there's a rod and reel involved, a bunch of tackle. Pretty cool. Yeah. And Matt's a great guy. Yeah. You can't yeah. beat Matt. It's a good group of guys. You know, they have it a bunch is. of charters, to, too. So if you guys are looking to get on some trips with kind of more of a charter uh, type operation, you know I, know, I know the club has a whole bunch of trips, too, with some openings. All right. Cam says, did you see the SpaceX booster landing down there? We saw that beautiful SpaceX. It was gorgeous. Coming up the Baja coast, just going. It was really bitching. Huh. Really bitching. Thank you for asking. That's another Wonderful thing about this trip. Yeah. Don't ask me about it's bluefin things, tuna yeah. and yellowtail. But <laughs> man, we had the F-18s buzzing us. We had the great food and crew of the Independence. We had Philip's birthday. We had Scott Buecher running amok 24 hours a day. The and, Eclipse. And I'm sure the next trip after you guys was grateful that you guys didn't have to use any bait. Yeah, exactly. They, they didn't I have to go load up on yeah, bait. Yeah, they didn't. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> they made a quick stop at the yeah. receiver. We Probably don't need any bait. Two we get, passes of bait. There everything's done. cured out. <laughs> yeah. You know, five days of curing it. <laughs> that was great. In fact, it's um, Young's Fishing Tackle. Young's, yeah. Yeah, Kevin came over. I've never met yep. him before. Yeah, good guy. Yeah, very nice, man. Very nice. So, uh, I, Kevin, if you're ever watching or you guys picked this up out there, thank you for introducing yourself. Looking forward to seeing you again. Tyler Tanaka, Turbo T2. Good evening, Phil and Sam and the Friedman Adventures family. Was following along and rooting for you to find the fish, but it's refreshing to hear your positive attitude and message. Thank you, Tyler. Hey, it's hard to keep me down. I have a good time no matter what. You know, you're the same way. What yeah. are you going to do, man? Why have be miserable? No, have a good time. Yeah, exactly. And we, we definitely did. There was some hijinks going on that <laughs> I some I could talk about, some I cannot. But <laughs> needless to say, I thought Scott might show up in my room with a knife one night, so I locked my door every single night. <laughs> All right, uh, Rich E. Rich, this is the best show ever. Don't forget to hit those likes. Richie, thank you so much. We deeply appreciate all your support. Sam, I had so many people coming up to me, and they were like, I love Tackle Shop Confessions. One guy, who was it? DJB. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's on here all the time. Uh -huh, he uh -huh. was on the trip, and he's like, you and Sam ought to take that show on the road, man. <laughs> you guys got that rocking. I love that show. So it was good. And then I had a guy come up to me and say, love all your content. I just want to say hi. And he goes, oh, Tim Marquez, how you doing, Tim? And I go, oh, you guys know one another? He goes, no, he's the tax guy, yeah, right? Yeah. I go, oh, yeah. <laughs> That's right, I forgot. So that was pretty funny, too. Scott Grant. Scott, any more Lincott? Scott was on the Island Spirit the other day when I was up there. What is the difference between inshore and offshore fishing in terms of regs from the California Fish and Wildlife? I don't know. That's a tough one. You know, there's, there's a... There's some things that are going to concern maybe depths, water depths, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, I don't think there's much as far as uh, distance, you know, like what you can catch close to shore and offshore um, as far as just distance. But I think that has to do more with depths, you know, like how deep you can fish. Some areas are going to be um, off limits as far as maybe around certain islands and things like that. I mean, I don't know if you're going to consider that offshore. But typically when we're fishing offshore open water, we're fishing for tuna. So those kind of fish you don't really catch inshore. Like you're not going to catch a bluefin in like you know, the horseshoe kelp or something like that. So there's no. But if you did, there would be no differences there. So I'm not really sure exactly if you're asking about that. I mean, it can be pretty complicated with some of the depth-oriented uh, questions and concerns. But um, I don't want to get too far into that because I'm honestly not that well versed as to to tell you something. You know, if you're going to take your own boat out and, uh, and make decisions based on that, um, Scott. So. Uh, maybe a little bit more information as to what you're what you're talking about, whether it's going to be on your own boat or, or maybe what to expect on a party boat. Maybe that might be something different too. All right, very good, Scott. Good to have you here with us tonight, my friend, Christopher Navarro. Sam, how do you fish the fluke for white sea bass and halibut? What technique? I'm on the pride Friday night for a day and a half. A, a lot of it is going to be similar to how you would fish a regular plastic, you know, uh, for like calico bass, except that there are times where you want to put a little bit more action into that fluke. And the way you're going to do that is that um, after you've set it up, well, that's going to be another part of it too. You're using different kinds of lead heads than you would be uh, with the plastics. But um, <clears throat> you'll take long sweeps with that rod versus a lot of times with the, with the calico bass stuff, you're just kind of winding real slow. You might kind of give it a little bit of lift to put some action into it. But with that fluke, since it doesn't have a, a tail, a boot tail, it, it's not going to swim on its own. You have to kind of Put some action into it with the rod but as far as rigging it up i think we've done some videos on that yeah you know, rigging stuff right. rigging that stuff up um that's going to be more uh, also based on maybe how deep you're fishing chris so if you're fishing deeper water you're going to use a bigger lead head maybe ounce and a half maybe even up to two ounce um, but most of the stuff if it's going to be in the shallow water down to maybe a, a, ha a half ounce or so is going to be and you use those get some heads i'll, I'll grab some of those okay and great so those uh, neck breakers too all right, Sam's going to go grab some of those. While he does, I want to mention Tim Marquez, who I just mentioned a moment ago, but he's from A-Best Income Tax, big supporter of the show. If you're having tax problems, you want to get it done, it's almost April 15th, 310-892-3503. Heating and air conditioning needs. You want to turn to efficient heating and air conditioning. That's our buddy, John Lopez, 626-901-4822. Don't forget Ventura Sport Fishing. Up there in beautiful Ventura, 
California. Man, they have all kinds of opportunities. The Island Spirit, the California, and the Endeavor 805 Six seven six three four seven four. Take it away, Sam. Right. You have to cut this thing right here. So. No, I just I timed that perfectly. You screwed you me thought up. Thought you did. Yeah, thought really. Doggone it. Mess so, me all up. Here's the fluke he's talking about right there. Um, one of the ways you can do it is using these Vorbates lead heads, and these are designed also going to be maybe if you're fishing around any kind of kelp or even if there's a lot of eelgrass around. You can rig this thing weedless, so you're gonna that's cool. Put it right through there, and you're gonna end up coming back around <laughs> so that the lure itself is gonna basically cover the point of the hook. And so, if you're fishing around a lot of grass or stuff like that, you might try that. You know, that's gonna be kind of more your halibut thing, maybe, but but it could also be a sea bass thing. And then the other one is gonna be this this uh, get some head. Let me uh, if you want to give another commercial while I open this thing up. Why there. not? Yes, and also. Um, another commercial, Daiwa. They are there for you with the greatest in big game reels. You don't want to miss that pro car. Sam mentioned the other day on the show that he caught his biggest yellowfin tuna fishing an eagle claw pro car hook. Sam loves those hooks, and man, I can't wait to catch a big bluefin on them later on. So that's the lead head there. That's the get some lead head. The ones that we have here are the ones from Dolphin Tackle. They're kind of the guys who originated it. And same thing here, you're going, to, you're going to rig that up just like you would a regular plastic. You'll thread it right on there, just how it shows there. And then you'll cast and wind that, <clears throat> like I was saying, just like regular like uh, calico bass style fishing, except maybe some of the longer sweeps. And you want that thing to kind of go up and then it's going to fall, kind of go up and then it'll fall like that. So it's basically what you want to do. Also, too, with rigging these things up, if, you, if you're kind of not too sure how to do it, most of the boats now, they've been doing it for so long. Just have one of the crew members help you out with that. That way you put it on there nice and nice and straight, nice in the right way too. And then maybe they might even recommend which one of the two kind of lead heads were working better um, for that kind of fishing. Uh, another commercial we could do real quick is the Ventura uh, yeah. Outdoor Show that is coming up. Um, let's see, that is going to be Cinco de Mayo weekend, May 3rd, 4th, and 5th at the Ventura Fairgrounds. And guess what? Sam De La Torre has all kinds of free passes. He can save you some money. Come down here. He's got them, including these VIP three-day passes. Yeah. Which are, I don't know, valued at how much, Mackie? What was it? $432,000, something like that, <laughs> I think it was, if I had that right. But we've got those, and you can just come down, and Sam has them here for you. Are you thinking about going to that? Yeah, yeah. I'm, Me too. I'm, I'm not sure which day. It probably would have to be the Sunday uh, on the 5th, so we'll have to see. Uh, what I got going on that day, but uh, maybe go for a couple hours or something Shoot, like that. Shoot, man. Tackle Shop Confession Special Edition at the Ventura Fairgrounds. We'll have to see, maybe. That's a, that's you a don't big sound maybe. that enthusiastic about it, man. <laughs> What's your problem? I hate making promises like we're going to catch a bunch of fish on this five days or something like that. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to do that. <laughs> if that's we can make it, stuff. we'll make it. <laughs> Nate Sal says, good evening. Michael Limon says, Sam, how much is your pro cure? How much is it? <laughs> Uh, it's right back there. Let's go check it out. You should put him on a, uh, a hunt to find it. All right, uh, and uh, more commercials. Man, I've never done so many commercials in all my life. If you want to find us on <laughs> Facebook, that's where we post all our trips. We have They're selling out. El Patron on May the 9th. Is it May the 9th? Yeah. Uh, May the 23rd, and then Island Spirit on the 31st. Island Spirit, any of those boats would be great to bring the kids out fishing with us all. $8.99. Eight ninety nine for the pro cure. Very good. <laughs> I'm trying to catch up with a guy I read basically. He was in uh, like the tech field for many years. He okay. sent me a, and uh, him and his wife are going to be in Ensenada for two months, and they want to combine with us. You you've been involved in all this in helping people okay. down there. So I he wants to meet up with me and everything else. So I'm really looking for. He sounds like a gem of a guy. Nice. Guillermo. No me acuerdo su apellido. I don't remember his last name, but uh, it sounded like a great guy. So okay. I'll, we'll have more information on that. Maybe be able to put something together here really, really soon. Uh, Dave Clark, good evening. Jan, Sam, did you see that Blake Wasano from the Star was named new captain of the Condor? Have you fished with Blake? I have. I've had many years, actually. You know, I was um, uh, fishing with Blake many years on the Royal Star. 
super great dude. Um, very, very knowledgeable as far as running a boat, catching fish. I mean, it's one of the probably best fishermen I've ever fished with. Really? Know, to be honest with you. Yeah, that guy, he, he, can, he can hook a fish and he can land a fish probably just as good as anybody out there. And he's, and he's, and he's pretty passionate about finding fish, too. He was usually one of the guys that was pretty integral in, in, in finding fish when we were on those trips. You know, he's up, up in the crow's nest there. And, and uh, you know, I can thank him for a lot of good catches that we've had on, on those trips that we've had. So, yeah, I did see that news, you know. So that's going to be good for that boat. I mean, that, you know, Blake, he's a he's super good guy. And he's, he's a guy that I think a boat like that's going to really, really uh, uh, prosper, you know, from having a guy like that. So, I, I guarantee. Yeah. Guarantee. I'm actually, I just talked to him the other day. And so... I'm kind of anxious to see about getting on that boat this year. Maybe even, might be a little late doing a charter this year, but maybe we might call down there and see if we can put something together. All right, congratulations, Blake, from all of us here at Tackle Shop Confessions. Cue ball, Phil, good to have you back. I'm late. Cue ball, good to see you here. Guess the five day was tough. Uh, that's fishing. It's good to be out on the water. Absolutely, man. Like Sam and I were just talking, man. You got to look at the positives here. Michael Limon. Boy, Michael Limon is loading up. It's like Scott Booker tonight. What is going on? Out of his hand. Yeah, yeah, take it away. <laughs> We're trying to get out of here, right? <laughs> uh, Michael Limon, Sam, what bait caster for a beginner, and what pound test to put on the reel? Well, or I mean, the rail. It's, yeah. As yeah. far as for a beginner, I mean, if you're going to just start getting into fishing in general, um, the bait casters that you would use for some of the boats are a little bit on the bigger side, so. Even a beginner reel, they really don't make like a, a entry level uh, bait caster that's kind of rated for salt water. You're going to be getting into a, a maybe a 300 size uh, Lexa or something like that, and those those are probably going to be where I would start. But all the brands have a 300 size reel, so that's kind of what I would start with. But if you're not looking to get on the boat, there's uh, Abu Garcia makes like you know the Black Max or the the different Max reels that they make, and those are around you know 100 bucks or less, and that would be a good one too. I think Shimano makes that SLX. Uh, we sold a lot of those to guys fishing the local parks, inside the harbor, things like that. That's a good one as well. As far as what line you're going to put on there, probably some 20-pound braid. Probably be the most common or some like 10-pound mono. All right, fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, do I have like paint on my face or something? Every time I look out there, Mackie like is squinting and like... Yeah, well, a little, he doesn't no. look ha Is there something going yeah, on? A feather oh, right there. Oh, yeah. is that what it is? That's about it. Hey, making me nervous. Like there's something <laughs> going on here. Camargo one. Hello, Phil and Sam. Great to see you guys on Taco Tuesday. Phil, when it comes to Ensenada, where should fishermen lodge and charter with? Uh, Camargo, there, there's a lot of good folks down there. So um, I love black, uh, black tail. No, black fin. Black fin out there on Punta Banda. I love Victor. They do a great job. They're very, 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 very fishy. Very fishy. So Blacktail is a great place. Personally, I like staying at a place called the San Nicolas, San Nicolas. Um, it's affordable. It's not the newest place in town, but you know, hey, you're in Mexico. If you're like Sam and you like to hit the casino, it's adjacent to the building. You just mm. walk out one door and then another one. You've got all that going on. Uh, the food there in the restaurant is fantastic, especially that surf and turf burger. Man, they got a surf and turf burger with shrimp and really big hand pressed piece of beef. It's so good. So that's what I like. Also, Botes Juanitos. Uh, that's another place where you can go. There's a guy named Foca Paulina who uh, does videos uh, or shows with me down there in Mexico. We're going to go do a surf fishing thing with her here really, really soon. Mackie, I, he's making me nervous tonight. I don't know why he's looking at me like this. I guess he's concentrating on everything. Okay. Uh, yeah, you could go there to Botes Juanitos <laughs> and ask for Foca. And uh, he is very fishy. He fishes super hard. That guy is a really cool guy. So he's another good guy. And, you know, the game fisher, Mike Slater, does mm -hmm. a pretty good job. And then there's some other guys that I haven't fished with yet, but people tell me, man, my experience has been great. Um, I think Baja Fishing, Mara's, Mars? Sword Fishing. Mm -hmm. I hear a lot of good stuff. Is it Blackfin, right? You were talking yeah, about Blackfin's Blackfin. great. And uh, Diego, maybe. Uh, Diego Nuno, man, hundred mm -hmm. uh, percent. I don't know if he has his guy running. I know. Yeah, he's, yeah, I think he's. Yeah, well, I'll look into that. I'm gonna. I'll talk to Diego tonight. You and talked see. about uh, what's her name's uh, Paulina. Yeah, Paulina, yeah. Foca is. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you can go there, and they're great. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so yeah, there's several places. And if I can help you further, please just send me a text. 
and I'll be happy to get back to you. 657-227-6459. Who knows? Maybe uh, we could team up on a trip well, when we're down there. I know that would be a lot of fun. All right, Leonard Rivera, why are the number four Mutu circle hooks so hard to find, Sam? We haven't looked here. Oh, we got them. That's why. Oh yeah. my God! Yeah, boxes and boxes. Of them. Yeah, Leonard, you came to the right place. Yeah, yeah, we got we got hundreds and hundreds of them here. So are they hard to find elsewhere? I don't Obviously, know. I huh? couldn't tell you. I don't look elsewhere. I mean, we got them here though. <laughs> yeah, I like it. All right, well there you go, man. That sounds really good to me. All right, um, 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 there we are. Uh, Raul Amaraz. Raul, great to see you here. Phil, Sam, good evening, Sam. Just got an Ocean Jigger 4000 HG as a gift. Need a rod to pair with. Any recommendations? Thanks. Thank you, Raul. Yeah, we got um, you know stuff that's off the shelf there. We have those Megalodon uh, 608, 609 would be kind of the most common ones. We also have, like I was mentioning earlier, we have some stuff, pre-made stuff, um, uh, kind of custom rods as well. You get into that um, the same thing, that 608, 609. Maybe a Zeus 2 to a Zeus 4, maybe even, even up to a Zeus 5 in the United Composite, or a CXJ 6004, 6005, something like that. Um, American Tackle also has some nice blanks, and we have some of those made up as well. Um, so, yeah, we got quite a few different ones there, but that's going to be kind of the speed. On the heavier side, that's a kind of a bigger reel, but on the heavier side, typically, is going to be what matches up with that. All right, Independence rolling up on the Mushroom Bank as we speak. We'll see if they can get a night bite going here tonight. Uh, there may be another guy, I think Tribute's out with him, and I think maybe a Pacific Dawn. I'm not positive on that, but I know the Independence is out. We'll keep you updated as those bluefin, as you well know, have been out of the picture. Michael Limon, hey, Phil, can you tell the Freeman Adventure family about the video you showed me before the show? Uh, it was a video of Scott Buchert in the stern of the Independence having lots of fun and trolling, which... I don't want to spoil the surprise. I want to show the people the video here very soon. Is that okay with you? All right. Was perfect. it an inspiring video, maybe? Yeah, for Michael. Yeah, Michael yeah. hasn't stopped uh, laughing. I mean, Michael hasn't stopped. The enthusiasm yes. generated in this young man uh, really makes me proud. It's a little bit Three Stooges-esque, kind of. Scott did his best to provide some cheap entertainment for us all, and you will enjoy it when we present it to you all. All right, Chris Navarro, Phil. Did your son try the Freeman Adventures wrench jig on your trip? He did, Chris, and he caught a beautiful big red on that on that beautiful wrench jig. So it was great. Uh, Brian came out and said, "What are you guys doing, man?" <laughs> it got so freaking windy though, even on the rock cut zone, that we needed way heavier. You know, so yeah. it was just not working. But he got one fish on it. Thank you so much, Camargo. One Sam. It was so sad to see you missing from the San Diego dock days, day at the docks. But I, it's good to know you got some rest. Still, it was a great time, though. What's next, Sam, on the world tour? I know, huh? Yeah, really? Yeah, I think our tour's over for this year as far as shows and stuff like that. But, Thank uh, God, right? Yeah, well, no, I, I love doing them, but hopefully the season gets, gets underway here and we get into some regular business, so... Um, but yeah, we have to wait till next year for me to go back around. I know, I know. Andrew H., do you have any tackle bags or backpacks that would be good to fly with? Um, I think any of them would. I, I, I'm sure that there's some, you know, limitations. For multi-day to... trips, he's talking about. He said. Oh, for multi-day trips. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Fly with. Um, <clears throat> um, I mean, I'm assuming like a long-range trip is what he's saying. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's there's a couple. I mean, Shimano's going to reissue the the one that was very popular from them, that uh, um, we actually they stopped making it for a couple of years, so that's going to be a good one. Um, I know that the SKB one, the one uh, that we had at the show, I got to get some more of those. That was a pretty popular one because it's a backpack and it also has a, has a, the ability to to roll, so it has wheels. That one's a pretty good one. Um, there's a couple. Other. I think I think Daiwa's got one. I mean, they're all pretty much the same. They're Sometimes they're configured a little bit different as far as the way that the boxes go in or the way that the, uh, the bags and the different extra pouches um, are configured. So you might find you like one better than the other. But they're all pretty much the same as far as, as, far as what they are. But you know, any of the bigger brand ones would be good. All right. Did you hear that? Yeah. What was that? I don't know. Was it a frog? It could have been. No. Was Maybe it, it wasn't. emanating from his mouth or yes. from some other region? No, I think it was. Oh, okay. Yeah. You're burping over there, Dan. 
That's mm. what, yes, you are. Are you snoring? One of the two. Yeah. I hope it's burping. Yeah. You know, at least that's less offensive. I it think was he about, was snoring. Was, was he snoring or burping? Uh, <laughs> there was a three options. He's already denied two of them. So. Yeah, right. Well, it might be number three. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> ah, jeez. <laughs> Give me the hell out of here. Alan Rushing, welcome home. Uh, bet it was uh, still a ton of fun, even though the fish missed the memo and were no sh Absolutely, Alan. We had so much fun. Scott, my son, and just a bunch of really super nice people. Really, really great people. James Blanchard, hi. I was on the Pride about two to three weeks ago and was using a quarter ounce lead orange and glow in the dark at night. Yeah. That's pretty effective, right? Yeah, it's recently? Popular one. yeah, that orange one, the pink one, obviously the glow stuff at night as well. But yeah, that, that orange one's been a pop it's actually been pretty popular here the last I'd say a decade or so. Even even the guys that fish the twilight, you know, have really taken to that orange as well. All right, thank you, James, for sharing that. Uh, I'm sure um, uh, Chris is going on the pride, so maybe he'll uh, yeah uh, employ that. There's one guy that really loves the orange. He he actually takes credit for actually inventing orange. Yeah. Who is it? Uh, uh, she's not. I had it. In my, no, no, I can't remember. Dan Burns. Oh, <laughs> yeah. really? Yeah. Dan Burns takes credit for everything. Well, he definitely takes credit for that. So if he's listening, he's going to know what I'm talking Dan about. Dan Burns, how are you, man? <laughs> Don't poke that freaking beehive. Oh, my God. You know what? If, if this resonates with you, I'll flip. There was this guy I met at Long Beach Sport Fishing. It must have been, I want to say in the 80s, so 40-something years ago. And every, he was dressed in orange. His rods were all orange. His reels were all orange. Every, honestly, everything. And I went up to him and I go, hey, what, hey, what's the it's deal with the orange? orange? He goes, I'm crazy about orange. And I, I oh, okay. Dude, when we got in, you know, I'm like, hey, have a, you know, nice to see you. It's freaking. Car. The, the wheel wells were all orange. <laughs> everything. He was a nut. Hopefully he's passed. The, or yeah. I, I don't want to wish the guy dead, but yeah, yeah. he was an older guy and I was a younger guy. Yeah, that was a weird thing. Was that Dan Burns? Maybe that was Dan been. Burns' grandpa or something. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, Richard Reed. Um, hey, guys, the show is great as always. Thank you so much. Sam, does your store carry the E4 rod grip material? Yeah, we, we, we actually, I just picked up some more this morning, actually. But yeah, we pretty much have it in all the sizes that he makes. Um, and in and, and, and supply all the time. And, you know, we ship, too. I don't know where, Richard, where you're at, but we can ship that to you. Or if you want to come down and check it out here, we can help you choose the right sizes for it. Do you know what that is? No. So that's basically this stuff here. So that's the uh, the grip, the Hypalon oh, okay. style, style yeah. grip here. But uh, um, Darren Dohey from 310 Rodworks, he, he manufactures that, that material. So that's what he's talking about. All right, very good. Uh, Christopher Bailey. Chris, it's good to have you here on Tackle Shop Confessions, live from Island Fishing Tackle in Carson. Good evening, guys. That was fun following you on your trip. Thanks for the updates, tight lines. Hey, Chris, that was a lot of fun bringing you those updates, although it was chilly out there, man, blowing and chilly. And I finally figured out that I could only do like 30 second, maybe one minute updates to get those into you. But we'll, we'll figure that out. I'm working on that. A little bit more. They're launching these SpaceX things all the time. I'm going to figure out if I can get SpaceX to help you out. No. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm going to get what do you call it? I can't even remember. Now I'm starting to go downhill. Wi Fi. Somebody, yeah, right. But yeah. with uh, Starlink or whatever. Starlink. Oh, there you like go. a portable thing that yeah. I can take and then I have my own Wi Fi. Yeah. So we'll work on that, right, Michael? No, you're if right. I go downhill any further, He's not gonna do give me some either. coffee. Well, you said that about the, the merch. And I was right. Boom. We have the right. merch, right? <laughs> Mackie? You, can you have said that about you can have it tomorrow, right? Scott Buecher videos. Yes. Well, I mean, I don't know what the problem is ordering this stuff. I I can't do everything. No. You're just, picking on me. Just I can't. The one thing. Just the one thing. Which one? Just the merch. That's it. I uh, with the, what's his name's gonna yeah, get a hat. Video, video, if he's video, lucky. Video. <laughs> All right, uh, Christopher Navarro. We need to get Michael a, a microphone. No, we don't. No. No, we're not doing that. Sorry. Alan R. Love the Michael Limone show. Uh oh, maybe, huh? With his co host Sam and Phil. Yeah, yeah. really. This is the Michael Limone show. Uh, Chris Bailey, by the way, the yellowtail bait has been hot down on Puerto Penasco. Oh, the bite's been really good. It's been a top water bait 
as of late. Right, yeah. No, bite as of late. So good stuff. Puerto Panasco, Rocky yeah, Point. Should have took the boat around there. No, no. Yeah, <laughs> had to go all the way around, right? <laughs> they need to cut a Panama Canal kind yeah. of thing through there so we can go into the Gulf. All right, very good. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate it. Uh, Alex Al Alcaraz. Um, welcome back. We missed you. Alex, not as much as I missed you. Thank you so much, my friend Christopher Navarro. I watched Blake and Sam on the Royal Star tossing the surface iron years ago. Uh, rightly and lefty. A righty and lefty. The two longest monofilament arcs I've ever seen. Sam. <laughs> wow. We're casting away. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> All right. Sam, uh, what bait, plastic, lure do you recommend? Michael Limon. Live bait. Live bait. Yeah, live bait. For yeah. Corbina? For Corbina? Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. Live mackerel? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, live mackerel. Yeah. I mean, you get a big Corbina on yeah. a live mackerel. Look at those 80 pounders. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, you're blowing him off, huh? Nice question. I poor, think. Uh, poor child. It'd Just... be what? Ghost shrimp? Maybe uh, some. Uh, Muscle, muscle is probably one of your better ones too. If you get fresh muscle, that's probably your best. Did I? I, I even missed where he said Corvina. Where you did he say you that? You just said it. Oh, then we you. Oh, I said it. You hook him. Hook him in the, hook him in the collar. <laughs> you can butt hook him, belly hook him. You can back hook him. Nose hook him. Yeah. yeah you can way. do all that. All do that you stuff. believe all this? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> He's a smart kid. I love it. Yeah, you know, he's he's uh, gearing up, man, for Corby and I. I can see it right now. They're coming in, so that's going to be great stuff. All right, uh, cue ball. Conventional is conventional. LOL. Got to put in the time to learn them. That's it. Yeah. yeah, that's for sure. You know, I mean, you know, with with these new reels these days, the casting has been so easy. You know, but uh, Trinidad or Torium still kind of same kind of learning curve. You know, um, but I think it is kind of I don't know. I, I think it's more enjoyable for me, at least, you know, throwing a full-size conventional reel. But I can't deny that these new bait casters, I mean, they they cast really good. Really, really good. Yeah, they definitely do. Kai Fish Killer, hey, great to see you here with us tonight on Tackle Shop Confessions. Hi, Phil, welcome back to land. What you all thinking of fishing those flukes with fishing traditional Texas rig? Going to try the Berkeley Gulp version. Yeah, I mean that's basically what you're doing with these, uh, with these uh, uh, war baits, uh, neck breakers, like I was showing you earlier. It's the same basic thing, except it has a weight already attached to the front versus having like a, a bullet weight or something like that that you would for what he's talking about. But uh, but yeah, you you could do that. I mean they make larger bullet weights, something that's up to an ounce even, and so you could definitely do the same type of presentation using using a worm hook or something like that with these uh, zooms. In fact. I mean, in freshwater, that's pretty much how they're used all the time anyway. And even some guys saltwater-wise, they'll do that same type of deal, uh, fishing like uh, along the kelp beds or along the wall, they'll fish that same kind of deal too. So yeah, that definitely does work. I'm amazed that Scott Butcher, uh, Buchert is not here. I'm a, I'm a little disappointed. Is no, he he's washing dishes. Oh, is he? Yeah, he oh, is. That's right. But he listens and then he gets on his break. That guy, you know, I mean, talk about a work ethic. Maybe he's tired. He's really something. So part of the whole thing that was going on with Scott was that he was seeing the yellows that were being caught inside Ensenada. You can't go in there if you're a San Diego yeah, baseball. Yeah. You know that. Yeah, yeah. And so he's screaming at me because he thinks, you know, I know the president of Mexico yeah. and that I'm going to get permission and that I won't tell Brian. <laughs> so the plot thick thickens. And this is probably I shouldn't go down here because it's going to be a dumb ending to it. Aaron is a deckhand on the boat. We convinced Scott that Aaron's dating a Mexican girl whose uncle's a Pongaro, and waiting, he doesn't want to tell her, yeah. Brian, the captain, about the yellowtail bite because his girlfriend will dump him. Yeah. You know, so Scott's like, I don't care about his girlfriend. <laughs> I, I want yellowtail. And we're like, hey, Aaron, you know. And so breaks, yeah. Brian comes down, the captain, and I go, Aaron. And I point at Brian like, and he goes, and then Scott's just freaking <laughs> seething. So Brian gives us a, okay, tomorrow we're going to fish the Baja coast and blah, blah, blah. And then he goes, anybody have any other options? And Scott stands up and screams, Phil does. <laughs> and I go, Aaron, do we have any other options? He goes, I go, no, Brian, I have no other options. And Scott's just like, why won't you tell him? It was great. You had to be there, I think, to really enjoy that. It was so much fun. All right, where are we here? Uh, we're with Carlos, maybe? 
We are with Carlos. Yeah, yes. Carlos Sanchez. Carlos, great to see you here. What's up, fellas? Sam, do you have an Alua Seeker rod in stock? Nine or ten feet. I don't actually. I do have one used one in stock, but but no uh, no factory wrapped ones. But you know we can get those for you any time. I, I think most of those are going to come in that nine foot three or ten foot and from the factory. Uh, whichever one you're looking for, give us a call. We'll we'll give you a price on that. And you know Seeker's just down, right down there in Orange, so we can pick that up anytime. Tyler Tanaka. Hey, Sam, do you use Bimini Twist on your setups? If so, what setup and how many twists do you use? I don't, Tyler. Um, I, what I do is I'll, I'll uh, splice a little bit of hollow on the end of my Spectra, and I'll make a, a hollow loop with that, an inverted loop. So that's the way I put my loop on, on the end of my line. But I guess in a pinch you could do that, and it's about 20 turns. Is if I was going to do that. I, I've got info on a, uh, the guy sent me photos. I, I didn't put it to memory, but I'm going to have it on the morning briefing tomorrow. Some guy caught like a, I want to say a 47 or maybe a 49 pound halibut, April 7th on a private boat. And he had the photos and they, they waited at wow. Alameda. Yeah, that's a big one, that's huh? That's a big one. Probably one of the, as big as they get, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think yeah. the record's like 50, low 50s, I think, isn't it? Uh, I don't know. You know, Daniel Hottaway that runs the Island Spirit, he had a 55, 55 for a junior record. That's crazy. Yeah, when he was a kid yeah. fishing with Tucker, and then you can see the progression of how yeah, he became yeah. a captain after yeah. catching that monster. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, those are big, man. So I'll have that and the details for you tomorrow on the morning briefing. Uh, Doug Riven says hi from San Diego. Doug, great to see you. Hal Cooksey says... Hi, Phil and Sam, and hi, Hal, by, uh, for that matter. Thank you for being with us. Glad you had a safe trip. Those tough trips just make the good trips so much better. Oh, so true. Believe me, the next one's going to be fantastic after that. I'll tell you, that was really something else. Um, Michael Limon is back again. Sam, what size of blacktail hooks do you recommend for fishing the docks? Um, probably go pretty small. I mean... You know, down to an eight, something like that, six or eight, it'd probably be what I'd be in for that, yeah. Um, yes. Oh, very good. Oh, um, what? Uh, oh, you want me to read what? That's a shout out to the people in New York. There was a 5.7 earthquake. Okay, oh, wow. very good. That's not too big. That's, that's a little one. Itsy bitsy. Yeah. It's big for them, though, huh? New York? Yeah. Hopefully they're up to code with their buildings. Yeah. You know, all the money they waste in that city on crap. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's see. Uh, Doug Rubin, El Sueño. Have you guys ever used Ghost Wire Line? No, I remember seeing those guys here and there maybe seven, eight years ago. They were uh, promoting um, a new you know, brand of line. They have fluorocarbon, I believe. Um, I'm not sure if it really caught on. I haven't really heard much of it lately. But no, I never, I never, never tried it, Doug. I'm sure it's okay, but I've never tried it myself. Isaac says, good evening, late to the show. Isaac, always great to see you. In fact, Isaac wants to plan a Sunday on the island spirit where kids fish free. So we go up mm -hmm. with a bunch of adults, and then Michael goes, and all the other kids go, and we shout out to the earthquake people, and... Mm -hmm. You know, all together. You know, yeah. it'd be great. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, I'm in. I'm in, Isaac. Good day. Sunday's a good day for Sam too. Might be able to talk him into that. All right, um, Isaac again. Yeah, have you ever fished a flying fish on the slide? I heard about a few people trying it. Yeah, I mean, they uh, did that really. Yeah, that's like a that, fake one or yeah, uh, both. That's what yeah. I say. You know, th there's definitely uh, times where that happens, um, where you know the fish are pretty activated on the chum, but they won't bite anything else. Typically, um, it's going to be something that you use in, in replacement of maybe using a kite or a balloon type of rig where you kind of like uh, are going to send out a flyer, but you're going to send it out on the surface. Sometimes, depending on the boat and, and how long it's sliding, how far it's going to slide, you can just put a, a flying fish back there. I haven't really seen it uh, produce a whole lot, but, you know, sometimes those bluefin, I mean, all they want to eat is a flying fish. They won't eat anything else. So... You know, I'd rather have that in the water than, than a sardine at, on those specific days. So definitely wouldn't rule it out. And you probably would hook it up and rig it the same way you would rig your, uh, your kite type thing with a big single hook on the front and a, and a treble hook in the rear. Uh, or even just a big single hook on the front would be okay too. Um, what I have heard a guy's doing and having some pretty good success with is when you're on the drift. So you, let's just say you're, you're on your drift, yeah. you're fishing the kite, you're getting some you know, kite bites here and there, is that you'll just 
you just put one of those flyers with the with the with the kite rig hook rig right in it and you just let it just oh that's just cool right right in the drift seems like that would work and you would just strip off a whole bunch of line yeah. and you want that thing to get down yeah so that thing is down there but the weird thing about it is i mean just you imagine that thing is not yeah. not really upright it's right. just kind of going around like Fluttering that like a dead like it's dead like a almost, dead bait yeah. yeah and and i've heard many times where that thing gets eaten on a big fish wow yeah, oh. 200 250 pounder would eat that thing the only thing you have to kind of be aware because it, it kind of happens suddenly you know because there's you don't feel a bait or, or jig or any kind of weight on your line all of a sudden it just <laughs> jolts yeah it's yeah. just kind of jolting you know so you have to be aware so you don't get a backlash but uh, i've heard it many times catch some big fish all right, you are watching Tackle Shop Confessions live from Island Fishing Tackle in, uh-oh, Scott Buger, here he comes, uh, live from Carson, California, where Sam is open for you to come by at any time. Great inventory here and some really great employees to help you make all your tackle decisions, so I highly recommend you do that. Uh, Chris wants to know, Sam, what's your... Uh, the rig for halibut, uh, what pound flora do you like? Um, so, I mean, typically you're using something like a dropper loop or a reverse dropper loop. As far as your line size, you're going to be using 15 or 20 pounds is going to be your most common. If you can rig up a trap hook, a lot, a lot of the uh, guys on the boats are, are probably going to help you with that. Um, where you use a, uh, a snell type hook where it has the bent eye like a SSW owner hook and then maybe like a size 4 or 6 treble hook for the trap hook. You can snell that, that thing and then you leave a long tag and you tie on the... the uh, the uh, the trap hook behind that, but um, I'm sure those guys on the Pride are, are pretty good at doing that by now. They should, you know, they they've got that down. But just make sure you have the equipment, which is going to be your maybe size one SSW owner hook and that size four or six uh, must add treble hook. For the I'm rear. hearing those noises again, emanating from Dan Light. Uh, that's your chair. No, no, it's not. Yeah. Because I looked out there, and then he, he and then I looked at Mackie, and Mackie was laughing. So I knew <laughs> that Mackie had heard it at that point. What are you doing tonight? Is that your gut, like, gurgling or what? Oh, it is. Okay. Uh, Must want a chicken wing or yeah, something, huh? it's hungry. Yeah, really. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. We're going to Chris Pro, who just wants to say hi, and Sam and I really appreciate that, Chris. Thanks for being here, my friend. Chris Navarro says, The Pride sent us tackle advice for my 1.5 this weekend. Uh -huh. They're saying for us to bring number four treble hooks for nose hooking for halibut. Is this a new thing? And Jane Blanchard says, yes, Chris, I use a number four treble hook. Sam. Yeah, yeah, sounds good to me, yeah. I mean, that's just another way of doing it. I'm sure they're doing it on a dropper loop or so, something like that. But, Chris, you know, I mean, I, I wouldn't get too worried about, you know, not having the right gear. Those guys are going to make sure that you're going to rig up properly. I guess what I mean is as far as not the gear but your presentation method, you're not going to go on the boat and, and have nobody help you out. So make sure you have, you know, uh, uh, I would say sinkers from four to 12 ounce. Hook size is going to be your common stuff, but these treble hooks definitely are probably something you don't have in your in your stash. So, you know, come by and pick up some of those treble hooks. All right, Isaac sends 20 bucks to make Michael's dreams of delicious Jeez. chicken wings come true. That's not going to do it. We need a little bit more help out there. <laughs> but Michael, for 20 bucks, we can get you one chicken wing. Yeah, one each, right? And no season fries or any of that foolishness right now. We'll see how this goes. All right. Something tells me we're going to be over there having chicken wings tonight again. All right, James. Uh, okay, no. Emmanuel Navedo from Florida saying hello. Emmanuel, I know it's late for you there. Thank you so much for being with us here tonight as we move up on the 10 o'clock hour in Florida where my son Patrick also finds himself. My turn to choke. <laughs> <coughs> Michael's like, oh my God, this gets coughing on me. All right, um, Dave Clark, Sam, I was unable to find the owner for. Yeah, we got him here, Dave. We're, we got him. We're loaded yeah, up I'm with him. Not sure where you were looking. <laughs> uh, Scott uh, Bu Buchert says the trip was fun. Yeah. He made it fun. Oh, okay. He, he did. He was a lot of fun. He was cool. Scott, thanks for being there. Thanks for being so much fun. Uh, we're able to joke with one another and have a lot of fun. And that deal you proposed to me while I was driving to Sam's and told you I'd give you the answer tomorrow, I'm still thinking about it, so behave yourself. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong right with there. me? I know, I don't have any more. Oh, wait, maybe a little. Oh, I think that did it. Could have been. Oh. 
So much better. Okay, thank you very much, Dave Clark. Um, he couldn't find the hooks. Uh, Scott said Should trip was fun, and Scott said any tuna today. Scott, uh, they are just getting out there to the shroom, the mushroom bank. Uh, at least that's where they were headed the last time I talked to them. On board the Independence, uh, I think there's a couple other boats bumping around with them. Weather's much improved, much better, so that could make a huge difference. We'll see how that goes. All right, um, Dave Clark. The owner of 4X50 Treble. So I got the BKK Trebles. Do you like them for Big Blue Fin Tuna? Yeah, those are those are good too. You know, um, those those 50 Trebles we have those here in stock as well. I, I think that was a continuation of your comment earlier uh, about the four, uh, the owner four. But uh, but yeah, we got those in stock. Um, you know, good. The BKKs are good too. But that owner four four X five O has been kind of a standard the last couple of years for guys making their flyer rigs for the tuna. Um, but those BKKs would work just as good. I think the owners are a little bit more affordable. The BKKs I think are a little bit more expensive. But uh, but uh, but yeah, if you need some more, we we got them and both the size four Mutus and also those five O trebles. Wow! Only an hour into the show mm -hmm. and we're down to uh, just very few questions. I probably shouldn't say that because that's when we get a whole. Oh my God! Here it goes already. Uh, I thought we were getting out of here. A little bit early tonight. I'm a little tired. I'm an older man now, as you, you realize, right? You're an older, mature. Older kid. I act like, <laughs> no, not a kid. I'm very mature. Do you ever see me fooling around and joking? Never. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Um, Christopher Navarro, I'm on the Island Spirit Kids trip. If Steve Puckett qualifies as a kid. Steve does qualify yeah. as a kid, doesn't he? I'm Fun sure loving. He would, yeah. Great guy. <laughs> All right, very good. Chris, yeah, we'll have to do that. Kai, fish killer, does anyone these days make something like a UFO Iron Man number one? Oh, my God, mm. I remember those. Dick Uranga. Yeah. Yep, you remember Dick? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying Paula? to remember if anybody makes a jig like that. I mean, not really. They're just a small metal jig. Like, uh, oh, yeah, is that the sumo? No, they're not no. around anymore. Yeah, I mean, oh, they're gone too. Basically, a small metal jig. I mean, kind of like a diamond jig. I mean, it's not a diamond jig, but that'd probably be the closest thing to it, you know. So it's just a smaller, a smaller jig, you know, metal jig. It was kind of a stamped or a die cast jig, I think. Um, but yeah, as far as I know, no one's really making anything like that small. Maybe what's replaced that? It's kind of been like that Colt Sniper Zakana style jig. That's kind of what's replaced that category of jig, that smaller uh, uh, metal jig. So. That's what you're going to find to replace that. All right. Very cool. And I'll be at Hoff's Hut in Torrance tomorrow at what time? Probably 7? Yeah. I think it starts at 6. Starts yeah. at 6. Yeah. You yeah. come and have dinner. Having dinner. Yeah. they have It's a restaurant. <clears throat> and so by 7, I think you're supposed to be ready to roll. Okay. I'll yeah. be ready. <laughs> Are you coming to that tomorrow, Mackie? I have no clue. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> We're not explaining this very well. If yeah. He doesn't know what we're talking about. Yeah. Everybody out there. You haven't must... told anybody about it. Huh? Yeah. I'm doing... Yeah. Well, I mean... <laughs> Yeah, no, I I posted about it a few times. I don't like to brag and say, "Oh, I'm the guest speaker." You know, I don't like that. So, what does Mackie do easy. for you here again? I forget. Mackie's our cameraman, our publicist. So our, he should be the, at least one of the guys. I think maybe the first guy that would know where you. Yeah, need that'd be. be. Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah. 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 Well, what are you talking about? You're speaking where? <laughs> he must be playing poker on his phone. Yeah. That's what he's doing. He looks up every once in a while. Oh, they they're looking at me. Play poker. Yeah, I told anybody. Yeah, that's listen what, to that, one word of the deal, show. Right put put yeah. it on him. <laughs> you, trying to put it on this guy. Uh, yeah, trying I'm gonna to help you out. See if Scott Buchard's available. <laughs> yeah. You know what the hell? All right, here we go. Uh, back to our scintillating show here for a little bit, bit longer. Uh, Chris says he's going to come by the okay. shop tomorrow before Matt's meeting. You mean before Philip's meeting? That's right. Yeah, Matt's meeting to get what I need. Sam, I am. Thanks for the info. Um, Emmanuel Navedo in beautiful uh, Florida. My daughter, Aria, Aria, and son, Isaiah, said hi. Aria, Isaiah, thank you for staying up so late. We send all our very best to you and your great dad. Have a wonderful evening in beautiful Florida. Uh, conical uh, ten nautical, tendencies. nautical ten tenderness. I screw this guy up every time. Attendances, yes. I screw them up every time. I want them to be tender for some reason. You just screwed it up twice right now. I'm going downhill <laughs> fast. I really am going downhill fast. Um, let's see. Uh, he says, Gents, have you heard of anyone catching cows on an Abbott HX... Wide. 
wide Raptor. Raptor, wondering about its limitations. Thanks in advance. I'm making a comeback Speaking now. Speaking of limitations. Yeah, really. <laughs> Michael, go make me a coffee. But yeah, no, definitely that reel's caught many, many, many cows. You know, um, you know, it, it's it's going to be like your smallest big reel. You know, it's definitely still kind of in the smallest reel category. It comes from like the live bait series of reels, but it's the biggest one in that series. And um, I, I always forget his name, but I know he caught that 300 pounder. Joe Martinez. Yeah, Joe Martinez caught it on that HXY. That was a 300 and whatever pound fish. Yeah, 315. You know? 315. So yeah, that reel is more than capable. No problem with that. And they even make it in a three speed and makes the reel even more capable. So if it's something that you're interested in, I would even look at that three speed. That, that's a pretty cool reel. Sam, I think this is a good time to clarify things with our public out there. Before you have PETA protesters out there with signs saying, these guys are hooking cows. We can't have this out. What is a cow? What is a cow? What is a cow? So, it's a bovine. Yes. Yeah, so but we're talking about something. Was that Dan? Yeah. Uh, was that another noise? There or was he's... another cow noise. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's what he's doing tonight. <laughs> cow noises. Excellent, Dan. So for you guys that aren't sure what, what, what he's talking about is any tuna over or 200 pounds or over is right. considered a cow. Any that's 300 it. 300 pounds or over is considered a super cow. All right. We just want to make that clear. Yeah. We're not hooking actual cows. No. With big old circle hooks. Yes. Boy, that would be no good. Cows. Can you imagine that, though, man? You reel in a freaking cow. You got ribeyes for the rest of the year. <laughs> Sounds better than anything else you could do to me. I'm in, man. We're going to have to see if we can do that. Uh, Christopher Navarro, Sam, are you fishing a reel loaded with spectra for rock fishing? 100%. 100%. Yeah. Feel and, the bites and everything else? Even is that thinner why? spectra. Well, also, too, you can get down with less weight. That's so, true. Yeah, we're like, let's say a guy fishing 30 or 40 pound mono has to use 16 ounces of weight, let's say, as an example. If you use, like, 50-pound braid or even 30-pound braid, you probably can get down with 6 or 8 ounces. So that makes it a lot easier to fish. All right, very good. Emmanuel Navello says, uh, HXW is a workhorse. I'll definitely, it will definitely get the job done. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's a good reel. All right, Hal says, thinking of a 400-size bait caster with, uh, what does that say? Says what ratio? What would ratio you, would you recommend? recommend? Yeah, yeah. You know, anything in that six to one to seven to one. You know, those middle ratios is probably going to be what is the most versatile. Uh, seven to one probably being the most popular, to be honest with you. But uh, six to one or seven to one is going to be what your most versatile is. They usually uh, are going to be offering the same kind of line retrieval as most of your full size bait cashers would. I'm sorry, uh, conventional reels would. And so, if you think of it in those terms, it's about the same line pickup that a uh, full size conventional reel would have. If you wanted to do something that was kind of pure, like rock fishing, you might consider the lower gear ratio, a little easier to wind in those heavy weights. And if it was going to be something that was more of a lure fishing only, you might even bump it up to that 8 to 1. But that 6 to 1 or 7 to 1 um, speeds are, are, are going to be fine. All right, good stuff. Reface, rods and broads. Ooh, we've never had this guy on. Never. Rods and broads. Sounds like a good combination to me. Mm -hmm. um, podcast. The outdoor. Oh, he, he does he do a podcast? That's, we're gonna have to check that out. What's up, Phyllis? Thanks for all the information and sharing a spot for all of us to collect and share our passion for fishing. Thank you so much for being here. And uh, if you do a podcast, uh, we'll definitely check it out and uh, let everybody know about you. That is great. Thank you so much for being here. Christopher Navarro gets Michael another chicken wing with a $20 bill. Chris, thank you so very much. Get some wings and sleep, Bill. Get good grades. Michael, somebody feed Dan. No, let's not. I mean, we're going to hear more noises. Sam is fasting, fasting tonight. Are you? <laughs> no, I don't know. Oh. I, don't know. <laughs> oh, I thought you had something going on. Very good. Thank you so much, Chris. Two um, wings? Two wings for him, huh? Yeah, you're up to two. Is that's that good? That's usually about how many he eats, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> At least he's chewing the meat off the wings Yeah, now, yeah. Right? Yeah. He used to try to get it all in one bite, and if he only got half, he'd just throw, yeah. throw it away. That was not good. No. Was it? What? He's not even listening. <laughs> he's not listening to one word we're saying. What? What? What are you, what are you guys talking about? Uh, is that it? We're out of questions. I mean, I, I could, so, yeah. I could get into some other stuff. But hell, what let's get out of here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we never end up this early. All right. Well, um, what can I say, Sam? Uh, you will be open. Why don't you tell everybody about your store hours and all of that while Mackie approaches the camera, and gets ready to Hit shut us off. <laughs> So oh, wait a minute. We have another question. Don't go anywhere, oh, Mackie. Face too much. Go ahead. Oh, no, you don't want to. All right, so face too much. Yeah. Hey, Phil, uh, when you coming down to San Diego again, 
I need you to bring me that 648 SL blank Sam has <laughs> sitting on the rack. Oh, there you go. Kidding. Hope you guys had a great trip on the Independence. We truly did. And I made the point, and I'll make it again one more time tonight. If you can have a great trip and catch no fish. That's one heck of an operation. Yeah. Oh, no, those guys got it down. Same thing, sure. Royal Star, right? Yeah. yeah You'd feel lot, that way. For sure. A lot of those guys have that same type of attitude. They provide service, you know, and so, you know, when the fish gets hot and heavy, you know, they, they, <clears throat> they, they, they know what they're doing for sure. But even when you're traveling on travel days, you know, they, they, take, they take care of you and they make sure that you're having a good time. So you guys had five travel days, so I'm sure they took really <laughs> good care of you. But, uh, but I'm sure you guys had a great time. And as you know, you know, the normal thing for dinner is one of the crew members takes a shower, puts on a nice dress shirt, yeah. and serves you. And they're so kind and nice. So, I mean, first night, prime rib. Mm -hmm. uh, second night, um, I forget what it was. But we had prime rib, rack of lamb, huge ribeye steaks. Pasta and shrimp. Oh, I mean, and then, you know, I mean, breakfast, two hours later, snacks, oh, yeah. two hours later, lunch, two hours later, snacks, later, oh my God, yeah. it was so much food. It was ridiculous. And, you know, I tried to stay pretty much carnivore, um, and they, they, you know, worked right along with me, man. If there were pancakes, I got bacon and eggs. So it was great. Really, cool. really, really good. Kai Fish Killer, speaking of saltwater bait casters, that seems to be the trend over recent years. I'm still old school running small conventionals instead. Is there anything I lost by not switching? Um, I mean, yes and no. I mean, I, I think one of the biggest things that that, uh, that kind of makes sense, you know, for switching over on some of the gear is that the rods have gotten lighter too. So, you know, you're getting into these Phoenix rods and the United Composites. You know, the rods, just by by the technology, they've gotten so much lighter. And so the, 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 the bait caster reels are, are also lighter as well. They're also smaller diameter, so you can build them with like trigger type grips, maybe split grips, and stuff like that, where those reels kind of just go with that style of, of, of rod. And so I think a lot of it has to do also, um, you know, kind of what you're used to, but, but the newer rods do kind of have that type of design where you can go with a much lower profile reel and it fits those rods better. You kind of, if you have a, ch a chance to go into whatever your local tackle shop is, is check out the new rods and, and, and and swap the one reel for the other, like what you normally use, and then swap it for a bait cache, and you'll kind of see that some of those, it may or may not for you specifically, but for most people, it does kind of they kind of go together more uh, ergonomically, I guess you could say. All right, very good. Scott Butchard wants to know when our next trip is. We'll probably do a surf fishing event in April, and then in May we have the 9th and the 23rd on the El Patron out of Long Beach Sport Fishing. The 31st, Scott, will be on board the Island Spirit out of Ventura Sport Fishing. Scott. Thanks for asking. I love you. I really do. All right. Uh, oh, Scott's putting the screws to Sam here. Sam, what are you going to donate on the eight-day trip? Uh, maybe some, uh, some number four hooks. Perfect. <laughs> Everybody's looking for them, and you can find them on right the here. Trip. <laughs> yeah, on the eight-day trip. Yeah. yeah. Sam's going to give me, I'll give you a hook, Scott. How's that? Yeah. Uh, Sam, a person. <laughs> Sam, do you ship? I do. I do ship. I, we ship every day, actually. A little bit, you know, we don't do a ton of it, but uh, every day we have a package or two going out. All right, Angel Melgar, or Angel Melgar. What's up, guys? What do you think the water, when do you think the water will warm up again? On Wednesday, oh, maybe? Yeah. Or Thursday? Uh, probably today it <laughs> yeah. warmed up. I'm off yeah. the water. So yeah, yeah. Everything's going to do. As long as he doesn't go fishing, the fishing will be pretty good. So tomorrow, full speed. <laughs> uh, Angel, it's going to start to warm up when the wind stops blowing. When yeah. somebody turns that fan off, then... Um, you know, it, it should start to warm up. Uh, Mackie, hey, you know who this go. is. Um, Sam, it's been pretty windy locally. What size lead should I pack for rock fishing? That yeah. is a very excellent question. If you're going fishing like tonight or tomorrow, I mean, kind of the heaviest you can handle, you know, I mean, those 20 ounce weights, I know they're gigantic, but you'd probably be at some point fishing a 16 or 20 ounce weight. That'd probably be on the heaviest that you would probably need. But uh, one of the things that you can do to try to like offset that somewhat is using some lighter weight braid. So instead of having 65 pound or 80 pound braid on a reel, try some 30 pound braid and then that's gonna help you stay uh, more vertical. All right, excellent. Kenji Dodson says, always enjoy the show. Thanks for all the info and knowledge. Have a great one, guys. Kenji, thank you so much for being with us. Daniel Lightfoot burped and then said, hit the like button. <laughs> Very nice, hit that like button. 
you don't have to burp. Carlos Mosquera. Hey, Carlos, what's Let's happening? Howdy, gents. Hope all is with you guys. Sam, I'm curious to know if you have any UC Zeus five blanks in stock. If so, how much? Sam is on a treasure hunt right now looking out there. As I remind you all, the morning briefing tomorrow morning will be on the air. Also, we'll be going live to the El Patron to get an update on how their fishing at Catalina Island has been and a trip they've got going to Santa Barbara Island again very, very soon. And don't forget, it's tax season. Tim Marquez, 310-892-3503. I don't see Tim anywhere inside on here. He must be sleeping away. Take it away, Sam. Yes. Woo! <laughs> Nailed it. 160 bucks. Yeah. Carlos, that's how much that thing runs. That's it? That's the question he asked, and uh, I, I answered what, it. Okay. Yeah. There you go, Carlos. We got it. Get on down here. All right, N6 win. 600 MI of boat time. Uh, that's a lot of na nap time. Oh, 600 miles. 600 oh, miles. my God. Yeah. You're not kidding, man. But we literally pretty much sat out on deck. We brought our folding chair. I said to Philip, I go, who would have known that yeah. these folding chairs would have been so valuable? But I, I don't like being inside. I like being outside. And it was cold out there, but... Yeah, what are you going to do? Yeah, it was. No question about it. Rocket Dog says, what's up, fellas? How was the trip, Rocket? We've been going over it, man. It was not so good on the fishing and great on the crew and the boat and the people on board. We had a really, really good time. And Christopher Navarro is still lobbying hard for the Freeman Adventures Grunion Festival. That is a, such a good idea. Mackie and I will discuss it tonight as we... Uh, Listen to Dan burp through a dinner. I think it's going to be a fascinating <laughs> evening. And you're welcome to join us at SoCal Wings if so you can Cal get Wings. here in the next 30 seconds. You get one free um, wing. Yeah, you get one free wing. Um, so there you have it. All right. N6 win. Uh, when you got off the boat, <laughs> did they parade your catch up and down the dock? Or did they give you... Only uh, give you. Only give you. Court bags. Court bags for your catch. <laughs> you know, actually, I was like a freaking amazed. Like, when they started pulling all the rockfish we caught, it was like a lot. I go, man, I didn't realize we caught so many. But, yeah, we put the wood to those things, man. No question about it. Sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> man, that was something else. All right, uh, Sam, do you want to tell everybody your hours here? And uh, is there a special? Or, you know, we've, we've been remiss and. Having a funny password like pissing fun or yeah, know, something huh? like that. We haven't been doing that and getting people down here to buy something. Yeah, no, I'm, I still haven't worked on that. I mean, the one thing that I could do is uh, that we've been kind of been doing is you know anybody coming down um, that's buying some of our uh, uh, stuff from the show is the uh, rain shadow blanks. We got those twenty five percent off American tackle blanks, also twenty five percent off. So um, anything like that would be good. I think on our uh, our uh, UC rods. I know we have a little bit of overstock there still left from the show, and we could do the same kind of deal on those, 25% uh, off, whatever we have in stock um, on those UC rods, too. That'll probably only run here for the next week or so, and so if you guys are, are catching this a little bit late, you guys are going to miss out, but uh, I guess it weekends uh, this 13th here on Saturday, we'll do that for the rest of this week, so 25, 25% off on all, all that stuff. Is there a password? No, no password. Oh. You, but you have to mention it. You can't wait till you're going to pay and pull out your credit card and say, hey, wait a minute, what about my discount? Got to mention it ahead of time. It's not going to be an automatic discount. You got to mention it ahead of time. Um, and so, yeah, that'll be the deal. So that would be Rain Shadow, American Tackle, and United Composite. Okay. All righty. Well, uh, we're here. Uh, I like funny passwords. We're here 10 to 6. We'll be, what about Trocar? Trocar! Yeah, there you go. There you go. Our new yeah. sponsor. I love Trocar. And we're here 10 to 6, um, Monday through Saturday. 21809 Avalon Boulevard, City of Carson. Phone number is 310-707-1205. All right, perfect. Richie Rich has 92 people watching and only 59 likes. Come on, guys. Hit the like button. I totally agree. All right, for Sam De La Torre, I'll be back with the morning briefing and many other updates, including some of the videos that I shared with Michael before the show. Really intense stuff. Man, Woo. when Scott Buchard bounces that jig... Uh, well, I won't go any further. Uh, but we will have more for you tomorrow. <laughs> you can come down here to Island Fishing Tackle. I'll be over at Hoff's Hut in Torrance. Mackie knows nothing about it, but I will be there tomorrow uh, giving uh, maybe a surfishing 
seminar tomorrow night at 7, but it starts at 6, so you can come down there and have dinner. Hey, fellas, says Alex Ortega, and Mackie now is stuck between sitting and standing. Hey, fellas, you guys think the eclipse is going to have any effect on the fishing? You sure shut it down for us, yeah, man. I remember 2017 crappy eclipse. during that week, we didn't catch anything either. Then the following week, it was wide open. Are you serious? I think so. Boy, BS. I think so. Is that what this was? Uh, maybe. Why on earth did I schedule a trip to, during some dumb eclipse? You were wondering why they were giving you that trip. They're like, hey, Yeah, really? Hey, trip? take this, man. <laughs> Nobody else wants it. Chris Navarro says, Good night, guys. Keep the show going. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you again for Mackie, for Dan, for Michael Limon right here, and for my dear friend Sam. Time for wings. Thanks for joining <laughs> us. We'll see you soon, everybody. All right.